God is good. And all the time. Is good and that is his word. This day, this morning, it's already afternoon. I'm very happy. And I have five reasons I need to be thankful. First, I thank God for his blessings and for making it possible for me to be here today to share his word. Amen? I wasn't feeling well yesterday, even this morning when I woke up. I was very worried. But now I feel much better. Number two, I thank for my family, those who are here. And I know some are online for their support. My wife, Jackie, my mom, Anna, Jimmy Omare, that's Jimmy Oira, Alan Omare, Anna Sarink, Brian, and many others for support me. I also have special family members, Mama Aska Ondijo, that's the mom for Pastor Eric, and my friend, Charles Nyamati for supporting me. I'm also, number three, I'm very thankful my, for my church family. Uh, this week, no, this morning, our brother Fred for the historic prayer and for praying for me, brother Victor, for that wonderful student story, and also for devoting your time to support the church family. We have morning prayers and evening. There are those who coordinate. I'm very thankful. Also, our brother Daniel, for encouraging us to, to give in tithes and offerings, and uh, our choir for the special song. Those who did not hear that language, the choir was singing about, I know my Lord who take care of me. Amen? We have a communication team. Our brother, Brian, with your team and yours, they do a wonderful job. Since COVID hit us, I cannot forget you, including the praise team with Carista, Sister Damaris, Judy, and many others, Volcap, for the work you do for this church. Amen? I'm also thankful for Amy Vosire, who read the scripture this morning. Amen? She's a unique person in this church. A young person in the church choir, Amy, I'm proud of you. And there's a brother here called Tim Cram. He does a wonderful job in this church. I remember sometimes back, I don't know how I used to manage those things. I make the bulletin, I update the web, I come here, I stock the bathrooms, I rent the chairs at the back, check the heat, everything, the bathroom, my stock, and other things. So even the church is over, Brother Tim, Tim is here to make sure that we leave the church in order. Amen? Number four, I'm very thankful for our pastors, Simeon Mumani Mukaya. And the pastor is always not here. And our first elder Bernard, who challenged me to preach today. And the KCC leadership for allowing me to share this word to you today. 
Finally, on behalf of KCC Stewardship, we hand and the finance department, we are very thankful for those who have given tithes and offering to make a history of KCC that as of today, the first time we are not financially in a negative. Amen? And I ask you kindly, those who have not given being the first Sunday or the last month of the year, we have a chance to give. Those who have given, may God bless you beyond human imagination. Let us change the mood of complaining, maybe the mic, the screaming, the judge, and other things, and we come to being so that we can glorify our God. And we are blessed to have the technology that even those who are sick or who can't make to church, they are able to share with us the service. I've been here at KCC for over 20 years, but I never got a chance to preach from the pulpit. One of the qualities to be an elder is to be able to preach. So I'm a preacher on training. If I make a mistake or I step on your toes, please excuse me. But make sure you gain from what God has for us to do. I'm preaching to myself today too, and let God's message be straight forward and be helpful in our lives today and forever. KCC department is just me and the sister Salome. She has been sick. And I was very happy yesterday to see her. Let us keep her in our prayers. I want you to remember that most KCC summons, they come from our local speakers. And I remember Pastor Eric was encouraging us to use our local speakers. And I want you to know that if you need a special speaker to go to heaven, you are ready for hell. Jesus has invited many powerful speakers, and me personally have gained more from our local speakers. That's why, like, the most important advice you can get for the most important advice you can get in your life, it comes from your immediate family members, either parents or a sibling. So, as a member of this church family, it doesn't matter really the nature of a person, whether the parent is poor, a drunkard, or crazy educated or uneducated or rich, but let us concentrate on the message today and not the messenger. So I ask you kindly to pray for me and may God bless us all. Amen? So let us go to the word. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this afternoon because you love us. Thank you for your uncountable blessings and the providence. Today, we want to hear you to speak to us. Give us the Holy Spirit to guide and lead us in a special way that your word will be fruitful in our lives. Be with us in a special way for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our stewardship week. And our theme for this week has been putting God first. And as you saw from the 
verse which Amy read, it comes from Mark 2, 6, 33. Yeah, you can help me there, teams, please. For the next slide where we have a uh, slide number four. Oh, you can go to slide number two. Slide two. One more back. Back. Those who don't know, my name is Lawrence Machura Ikobi. Elda introduced me, but some may wonder who is speaking to us today. So the verse reads, Matthew 6, 33. But seek first this ki his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Amen? If we seek God first, all we need in this world, we can be able to get them. God calls us to be faithful stewards. Sorry, I had not put it on. And uh, that's from our bus. When we come, when we become faithful stewards, personal blessings will increase. Tithes and offerings will increase. Church needs will be met. And the morale will be high. Projects will be accomplished. Financial reports are encouraging, like the one we had from our last business meeting. Future looks will be bright. But sometimes people are not faithful. We make pledges here, they are not honors. Tithes and offerings are down, and the morale is low. Sometimes the situation is worse because of guilt. The problem is not lack of communication. Every time people stand here on the pulpit to encourage us to give during tithes and offerings, they explain to us why we need to give under the work of our offering. Communication should not be a reason. If you are a member in the church, you can think, oh, here, we have heat, we have light, we have mic, we flush the bathroom, they charge us for the water, even the sewage. There are so many needs in the church. One time I remember our church, the utilities already there were 17,000. And I think this year there might be more. So it's not like we don't know how to give tithes and offerings. Tithes, they support ministerial work, they go to the conference, and our local judge budget is supposed to be shared departments and maintaining the church. So we have lack of enthusiasm and absence of sincerity and honesty. The main reason why we break those promises or vows is lack of discipline. I have a picture there of a police officer, they are disciplined. So for us to be good stewards or to put God first, we must be disciplined. We don't learn discipline by attending seminar, listening to a sermon, making another commitment, or by making another vow. Discipline, it takes time. It's a matter of learning. It's a learning process. 
as a child learns from kindergarten or preschool, they go to first grade, all the levels we have in life. So let us learn about discipline as the Nazarite vow in number six. When we look on number six, verse three, the word is steward means manager. Amen? So we are all managers for God. So when I was young, you hear about the manager? It's a big person. And I remember that time, we had only one president in Kenya. But nowadays, we have so many presidents of the company. Something small is a president. That time, president means meant blessed president. So, for us to be managers for God, is it better to be a manager for God or to be a manager for man on this earth? It's better to be a manager for God. So, stewardship or management is one of the fundamentals of our belief as Seventh-day Adventists. Fundamental belief number 21 is about stewardship. So as good stewards, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists divine, divine uh, a good steward or a good Christian steward as someone who understands that God is the creator and the owner of everything we have. So, as the theme of this week is to put God first. What does it mean to put God first? Let me read the verse, and I like to read from the New Century Version. Seek first God's kingdom and what God wants, then all other needs will be met. We have so many needs on this planet Earth, but if we seek God first, we can be able to meet those needs. God is our creator. Let me to go to the next slide, 15. Tech team, please go to the next slide, 15. God is our creator, provider and sustainer. So if we put him first, it means serving him with everything we have in whatever situation. It means allowing his, his love for us to overflow into lives of people around us. To use his blessings or gifts to serve him and his creation. Amen? So this week we learned a lot so to miss the seven evening prayers as we share together about our stewardship. On Sunday, we learned how to put God first. Go to the next slide, please. Yeah, we shared how to put God first. And on Monday, Sister Rhoda Nyambane shared to us Daring it to go deeper and putting first things first. We need to start a day with God. In God, things are different than in this world ways. People say that a bad beginning makes a good ending. But in God, when we start with God, we will have a good day. Amen? Then on Tuesday, our brother Fred, he taught us about mental health.
development of health habits by listening to God's voice. When we pray, wake up and sleep, we need to wake up earlier and sleep earlier. We need to keep off the phones. Some people spend time on phone for long that it has become a problem in the family that people don't talk to one another. Everybody's on phone. If you want to go, if you want to know, go for an appointment or somewhere where people are waiting, you will, say, you will find that everybody's on phone. They don't, this technology can affect us, especially in socializing. Sometimes people spend a lot of time on internet, on TV. All these things, they combine or they affect us the way we think. Some people use, I can call them bad languages, and sometimes we are surprised that if we can use some languages which are not appropriate even from the pulpit, or the way we dress, or the way we think, and the things we do. So, our physical health, our talents, our money and possessions, they can affect our mental status. On Wednesday, Brother Bernard, our first elder shared about the quality relationship. How we can improve our relationship by growing in faithfulness, forgiveness, loving, and discipline as a principle. Also on Thursday, Brother Tony, our treasurer, he shared with us about making windows in heaven. We learned about unselfish spirit leads to unfaithful tithing. The same spirit will lead, would help us use our additional blessing to bless others and witness about the provider of all blessings. And then we know that blessings come from giving than receiving. Amen? Bless are those who give. And last evening, during our Vespers, our elder Charles Bogomba shared with us about acceptable and unacceptable offerings. Sometimes we wonder, maybe during campaigns, we make fundraising, maybe to build a church and others because we know politicians will give. We need really to be careful how we accept offerings. But God is the one who knows acceptable and unacceptable offering. God is watching and uh, assessing our giving patterns. Our confessed sins can prevent our offering to be accepted by God. We know the example of Cain and the brother when they were giving their offerings. It is not the greatness of, of the gift that makes the offering acceptable to God. It is the purpose of the heart, the spirit of gratitude, and the love that they express. Remember, stolen money or giving with pride is not acceptable. There are five elements which can assist us to put God first. When we look at the acronym FAST, F-I-R-S-T, it represents these five elements that can help us to put God first. That is faith. Number two, invisible, righteousness, serving God, and serving God with his treasures. 
When we look at faith, that is in the Hebrews 11, verse 1, the verse is on the screen. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Amen? We need to put our faith in God. The next letter is I, which is invisible. We need to put God first. We will not only need faith, but also fix our eyes on the invisible. Like the experience of Moses, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king, the king's anger, and they persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Amen? Can we make a free choice daily by deciding to set our eyes on Jesus? Our Lord is real. Amen? The third letter is R. That stands for righteousness. To put God first, we will not only need faith and fix our eyes on the individual, but we will also need the experience of his amazing righteousness. Number four is about serving God. Putting God first will not only need an act of faith to fix our eyes on the invisible and experience his righteousness, but most importantly to answer his call to serve him, as Isaiah 6 verse 8 tells us. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will I go and who will go for us? Together with Isaiah, we are ready to willingly answer such a crucial call. Here I am. Send me, Lord. Amen. The next letter, the last letter on the word faith first is presence. Putting God first will need from us not only the act of faith to fix our eyes on the invisible and experience his righteousness as well as we decide to serve God, but will also be reflected in the way we manage the treasures of our Heavenly Father. What he has put in our hands and if we are willing to put God first in management. Remember, we are all stewards. We are all managers. It doesn't matter you are young or old, we are God's managers. So does stewardship has anything to do with being disciplined? As we saw the policeman who is disciplined, you know when the police march, you have seen when like the president is, is inspecting them or going through, they stand. Sometimes you think they are not alive. They have discipline. So today, I don't know, do you know the first, the fastest marathon runner in the world as of today? Who knows? Who is the fastest marathon runner in the whole world? Kenya is a blessed country. One of our own on September 5th, 25th, this year, he won the marathon, sending a new record, but he has won four times. The fourth time, he ran the marathon in two hours, one minute and nine seconds. Amen? The marathon was 26 miles, 26.2 miles, or 42 kilometers. That is in Berlin, Germany. 
When I looked at this marathon, I have something common to share with him. When I was young, I did some things. Sometimes I wonder why I was doing them. Amen? I decided to walk. I, I had read this story that people used to walk to Kisumu. I decided to walk from my home to Kisumu. Amen? 1985. I started very early in the morning. I said, my mom, bye. I went to Mawawa to my elder sister Naomi Mbati. I slept there. I didn't tell her my plan. I, I knew I was going to Kisumu to look for a job after Form 4. I didn't tell her I was not taking a vehicle. I had money. I wanted to walk. If I get tired, I take what? I take a bus. With my certificates, I walk. I had a pastor. It was not easy. <laughs> Amen? From Mawawa to Kisum, it is how many kilometers? 39, no, 39.27 miles, that is 63 kilometers. You know, our, our cars, we drive 60, 70, sometimes 80 or above. So, Kipchoge was walking, when he ran in the marathon for two hours, he was taking, he was running 13 miles per hour, and he ran two hours. But for me, I started, when my sister went to, to teach Mawawa, I started, I walked to Matongo, that was seven in the morning, I reached there like five in the evening. I was tired. My sister in law, Christine, was wondering, hey, Alex, what's happened? My feet were swollen. I was stinky. I didn't tell her what. She gave me a shower. So, what I'm saying here is not really what I did, it's about discipline. And for Kipchoge to win in the marathon, he had to spend time. He started learning when he was young. He had run several times before he could win. And finally, he won. So, I have, I looked at the research because when we share the word of God, we need to engage all categories or ages. I looked to research, three researchers. One for the children, another one for the youth, another one for the adults. Amen? What did the research reflect? For children, the research was done and it showed that parents, church attendees, is linked to the position of child development. Amen? That was by Nicole King. That was done in March 16, 2016. It showed that attending church can help your children stay grounded in the word and in the faith. Amen? That is putting God first. What about the youth? Youth, no, church attendance boosts youth students' GPAs. The students who work in church, who serve in church, who attend church regularly, they will do well in school. Amen? I can testify from what I saw, those who participate in the Bible PowerPoint. They call it Piper Experience. Today, this afternoon, we don't have stewardship because we gave room for our Pathfinder to, to have their uh, power, Pathfinder Piper Experience. So, 
it has proved they did well because they are not lazy. To participate in Pathfinder Piper Ball, they go, they study, they spend a lot of time to learn those verses. It is helping them spiritually also when they will go out there. I will show you another example later, um, which I had from one of our, of our own who was saying about the youth. So about adults, the research which was done, church attendance boosts immunity. Amen? If you attend church, it boosts your immunity. Like now it's called, the immunity goes down. When you get old, you have a lot of challenges. You will have a lot of medication. A few weeks ago, I was taking antibiotics and they gave me other medicine. I counted them, they were like six. I said, oh. Really? This is going to my stomach? I'm thank God it's over now. So when you attend, you attend church, as our brother shared with us, mentally, you will benefit from the word of God. Amen? Please go to slide number 33. How can we be better stewards in our marriage. Most marriages are breaking. The church is suffering. The community is suffering. The country is suffering. The whole world is suffering. So we can tell our marriages by seeing our spouse as a gift from God. Amen? Yeah, I will come to the youth who are looking for spouses. You don't look for a spouse in the club. You look for a spouse in the church. And some of these say uncle, aunt, brother, cousin. Some of them we are not ready. Be serious. Amen? So, Number two, we need to pray regularly for our marriage and the spouses. Amen? I think the, most people, the elders and the pastors, they pray for us. I hope you pray for your marriages. And also we pray for you. Amen? Number three, learn and practice effective communication skills. Amen? Born separate. Home, father on phone, mother on phone, dad on phone, we need to communicate. Amen? Put those gardens aside, please. What does James 1 verse 9 tells us? Slide 36. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Amen? Number four, we need to praise and support our spouses. You need support from home before you get support out there. Number five, we need to forgive often. Do we have to count how many times we forgive? Matthew 6, verse 4. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. So, young children, I know you you play together and you fight. Or sometimes you are hurt intentionally or accidentally. Let us forgive one another. Church members, sometimes we strike one another. Let us forgive. How can we pray to our God, forgive us? And we don't give our, our own. We don't give our brother. We don't forgive our sister. We don't forgive our children. And there are children who hate their parents. 
it's very sad if somebody who brings you to this world, even if they are bad to you, this is my personal request to you. Anyone who brought you to this world, they may do bad things. It doesn't matter to what extent. Apparent is apparent, should be respected and be loved, even if you don't like what they do. Amen? Last, no, number six, we need to love too. Do you know love is a therapy? I see you have Obama loving and a monk loving. That is therapy. Proverbs 17, 22 reminds us, a merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries bones. Lastly, let us make emotional depots. Let us make bank accounts. Sometimes I tell my kids, I'm not supporting you so that you can support me. I won't support you so you can be able to help yourself. So emotion in our relationship, we need to make a deepest. You cannot expect love where you have not planted love. Love is like a bank account. Kindness is like a bank account. Colossians tells us, that's in New King James Version, but above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Amen? A deep love for God is the motivation for our commitment. So we need to be committing ourselves to God. Also, as we saw from the story I gave you about the Olympics, the athletes, athletes have to make lifetime changes if they want to win a gold medal. Amen? And the first Corinthians 9.25, It reads, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain bearership of crown, but we need to compete for an imperishable what? Crown. We talked about Kipchoge. He was very happy when he won. And he was carrying a Kenyan flag and he was given a crown. How good will it be if we win, a, we win a crown to go to heaven? Sometimes I imagine cases. It's the first church here in Minnesota. We are at the mother church. We have more than seven churches from this church here. I hope when it comes time to go to heaven, we get at least one or all of us from here when our Savior comes. Amen? So to go to heaven, we need transformation. Transformation requires commitment. Christ was committed when he died for us. He gave us a good example. He carried the cross for us. We cannot live by bread alone. The scripture tells us from Matthew 4, verse 4, no one can live only on food. People need every word God has spoken. Amen? 
It's a challenge to you and me today, this afternoon, to commit our life to our God. Remember this week, when we talk about stewardship, people think it's about money. This week, me personally, I get a lot because it was not, it was not talked mostly about money. Stewardship, we have thought of mental health. How can we relate mental health to stewardship? Family relationship and other things. The young people. Young people nowadays, they have a big problem. Mental health. So many of them, because of the choices they make. It's my plea to you. Parents have spent a lot of time and money to raise young people in the church. Where are they now? Where are our children, our brothers and sisters? It's very sad. This week we learned about putting God first. My, my daughter, my son, if you don't want to be crazy, if you don't want to die soon, put God first. We have drugs out there. We have a lot of things that affect why should you buy dearly to affect your life, your, your life or to die quicker? Those drugs kill. People go do weird things. You decide, oh, I'm a teenager, I'm free. I go to the club. Weird things happen to you there at the club. You get frustrated. What you have experienced, you knock your head. The next thing you want to kill yourself, managing the money. We talk about giving money here at church. People plan. You must work hard to be financially strong. We have weddings here. People call for wedding. They don't have even 5% of their wedding budget. We sacrifice. And the young people, they don't even contribute. You come to old people who should struggle to save for their retirement. Where are the young people? They should support themselves and do a wedding. You call, we, went, we, go, we involve even the parents, contribute for my wedding. You, the parents are supposed to receive because now you are able. They have taken time to raise you. They are broke. We don't want you future generation to have nothing as an inheritance to your children. Amen? Young people wake up. Don't buy shoes, maybe thousands. You go for a haircut. Basetroy was last year, last, was last week. He was mainly talking of stewardship. I gained heavily. Young people, manage your money. All the money. You buy expensive shoes, over 200, big haircut, be purifying, be cast, go to the parking lot and see. How much have you saved from your paycheck? Amen? Why is the church straining financially? I expect a church like this. We have raised doctors. I know there are more than 10 from this church. And now we are in this old church. We, are we going to remain we old people? Maybe if we have not died. Remember we bought this church because the people were here remained, they were seniors, they could not maintain the church, and we chipped in. And the God saved us from being tossed from place to place. I remember I had a speaker, Yama, we go here, we mess things, they said tomorrow don't come. We need to have stewardship team and spend a lot of time from what you told them, your feedback. What is our future plan? When that plan comes to you, own it. We want to have a community center. 
is sad over 20 years, cases he doesn't have even a nursery, or even weekday program for the youth, you find a small church, they have the kindergarten. If the classes they use, like we have rooms here, we spend a lot of kids running during the week, weekdays, winter, summer, cooling it. We need, we have professionals here, they can teach. I'm proud of what Sister Lynn is doing and uh, all the teachers in children's department. Children's store was here. You saw how many kids were here. Where are they going to use tomorrow? Where do we send them, prepare them before they go to college or anywhere? It's my prayer this afternoon. We are all managers. Young kids are the managers. They manage their time. That's why you see faith has a strong team here, they see. Let us be good stewards, and it will not be in vain. Let us use our money wisely by putting God first. We didn't have time, maybe we could ask people to give their testimonies, how they have given, and how God has blessed them. It's very sad when we stand here during offering and we pray, God bless those who don't have, so next time they can have something too. Who doesn't have anything to give? If you have nothing to give, I give an example of Tim. Come here, clean the church. You can do something. You can be at the entrance to welcome people. When I was young, I, was, I remember one day carrying a brick from Yabiyoto to Ogango, and we built a church. Most of our old people, the churches where they grew up, they have supported them. Where are our youth to support, to support cases so that we have a mega church so they can have a place to play basketball instead of going to deal with the drugs? Like now, our community, we are too big. We don't have a place for camp meeting. If we have a revival, we may not fit in this church. May God help us to be visionaries. We look beyond. I'm proud when my brother stand here and said, oh, we want to put the windows in the church. He said, oh, we, I want to buy for this side. One of our youth, she said, Lawrence, I will donate a window. I put a stick at the back. I don't know why they took them out. But when I look that label there, it says somebody donated something to this church. That label has been there where we bought the church from. A few days ago, you heard somebody say, oh, he has donated mine. Because maybe if they say the name, people say, oh, this person is proud. We don't give to be seen and we don't want to be proud to give. With technology, we don't have to be here to give. There's one verse I like to read. It is from the New Century Version. I will read it for now. I know the time is over. Phyllis. That's from 2 Corinthians 9, verse what? Verse 7. What does it say? Each of you should give as you have decided in your You should not be sad when you give. And you should not give because you feel forced to give. What's up, you know, they put name. Oh, you see, my name is not here. I have to give. Don't feel forced to give for the Lord. Amen? For God loves a person who gives if God loves you to give happily, you don't want to wait for Saturday to come and give your offering. Give your offering online. We have cash up. Which my, me, I have my own testimony. If I get paid Friday, I don't give right away. By Monday, the money is gone. And what follows is overdraft. But when I give, I'm happy. 
the debts have reduced. Because I remember one time I had a debt of 25,000 in a credit card. You have your own testimony. You cannot be poor by returning to God. May God help us in a special way that as we end the year, we need to make a commitment. Elder, you can play the piano. To improve our stewardship, our management, relationship by growing in faithfulness, forgiveness, and loving as a principle. Amen? If it is your prayer, like me, that we want to put God first, I will kindly ask you to stand up as we pray. Lord, help us to put you first. Choristers, you can ask us with a closing song. Help us to be faithful and generous with the resources you have used to bless our lives and the families. In his holy name. Amen. We can go ahead and sing the closing song. Choristers, please. Our closing song is, Sister Judith. 